Shalom everybody and welcome to Rega Ve'ivrit. This Shabbat we are in Parashat Shalach and we are reading about the account of the 12 spies. I want to look with you in another angle of the story of the 12 spies. But before we start there, I want to start in the very first verse in this parasha. Ve'edaber Adonai el Moshe le'emor Shlach lecha anashim vayatu et eretz kenan asher ani noten levnei Yisrael. There are two things that are very important about chapter 13 verse 1 that I wanted to pay attention to you. First of all, the term shlach lecha. The word lecha, every time you see in the text, in the Bible, the lecha, joined with a verb, there is an entry, there is a, almost like a preparation to enter into a new covenant. For example, Abraham, he said, Lech Lecha, to, to Noah, he said, Ase Lecha, eh, Bene Lecha. Every time you see the Lecha in conjunction with the verb, it means God is preparing Israel or the individual into something new, like a new entry, a new world, a new covenant. Now, he says here in the text, Shlach Lecha Anashim. You see, God sent the spies not because he could not give the land to the, to the children of Israel. Obviously, he prepared, he said, I'm going to give you the land. Well, then the question becomes, if he's going to give the land, why would he send the people to look at the land? What is the purpose before, behind this? You see, the real purpose behind this, the shelach lecha, is to prepare the heart of the people by receiving encouragement in order to be ready spiritually to receive the inheritance of God. Even in receiving the inheritance of God or the fullness, one has to be ready to receive a fullness. Think about receiving a gift, but if one is not ready to receive such a giant gift, he might be overwhelmed and not be able to receive the gift. So he's sending shelach lecha anashim to you. I am sending the people for your sake, for your sake. Now, I wanted to notice some, something about the sending of the people. Because the question we all have to ask ourselves, what is the great sin that was commo, co committed by the people? So verse 18, Vereitem et aaretz. This word, re'etem, lir'ot, re'e, is more than to see. It's to experience the essence of the land. Well, why are you to experience the essence of the land? Mahi, what is this land? Ma'ama yoshev aleha. Who are the people are there? Achazak, who are ape? Ameatu, imrav, are they great? Who are they? Who, who are those people? Is the land fat or the land skinny? You see, God already knows the answer. He is sending them to the land to strengthen the hearts of the people, the hearts of the people. And here it says, take from the pre aaretz Now, I wanted to notice the key transition of the text where I really want to spend a moment with you. Verse 20. Two. So there is an aliyah that is going on. When we obey God, we are spiritually ascending. And that's exactly where it started. There is a spiritual ascension that is starting, taking place all the way to Hebron. Notice the Mount of the Negev are much higher than Hebron. But there is a spiritual, spiritual ascension that is taking place. But then he said, Ve'yavot Hebron ve'sham achi man shishi ve'talmi yelidei anak The sons of the anak. Who is the anak? The word anak is the sons of the giants. The question is, 
were they really a giant in there there? Because later on they come and say, and they tell the story to verse 27. He said, oh, the land is wonderful, the land of Chalav Vedevash, and it's wonderful. But there is a problem, he said there. He says in verse 28, Vegam Yeledeya Anakra Inusham, and it says there is no way that we can defeat them. We can know that. That was the sin. We have to understand the sin of the land, what was happening in the land. God nowhere tell them, go and create a military plan on how to conquer the land. That was not what God has prepared for them, for their hearts. Not at all. The only preparation that God wanted to do is go and bring the fruit, to bring the good report from the land, and to encourage the people. The sin here is the sin of the discouragement of Kelal Israel. And we're learning an important role for that. Listen to what Joshua did. It says in the Hebrew, Vayahas Kelev et Aam El Moshe Vayomer. What is Vayahas? Shh. He's silent, the people. He say, enough. You are discouraging the people. Brothers and sisters, there is our principle for us today. When we speak a word of discouragement against a situation, against, the, against something that God is telling the people to, to do, more than likely you're not just discouraging yourself, you are discouraging those who are around you. And he say, I saw unshame me dot. Which is interesting, the word me die in Hebrew is high. Somebody is having me die. But it's have another issue. The word me die is also talk about spiritual attribute. He said we saw people spiritually and physically who are greater than us. You see, God never asked them for a military plan. He simply asked him to speak Chaim, to speak life, to speak encouragement. And that would have been enough for the encouragement to bring the Geula forward. Friends, let us not delay the Geula upon those who are around us. Speak life and positivity and Chaim and believe that God is in it. And if God said something, simply obey. And if you don't believe what God says, it's better to close your mouth altogether and do exactly what Joshua did. Shh, vayahas. Let us be people who speak life and not death, because life and death are in the tongue. This is this week, Rega Beivrit. <music>